This looks like real rallying country. It's the Czech Republic where a hundred years ago Skoda was founded and to celebrate the centenary, the popular British Skoda trophy included the Rally Bohemia for the first time. 18 crews had made the epic journey there last summer. We did the journey in a day. Um, it took us about 20 hours from the Channel Port to get here. Um, it's quite a windy route, but interesting, certainly, coming through what was Eastern Germany and then into Czecho. And, uh, yeah, we didn't have any problems coming. It was pretty hot, but we got here. It was all new to the Brits, who made sure they had a good look at the route. I've never seen stages like it, to be honest. I mean, they're so rough. We were struggling on grip on one stage, and we didn't, we couldn't get the tyres I wanted out here. We had a couple of Yokohamas at home, so I had a word with Dad on the phone, and he's flown out with them and brought them over as hang luggage. So I'm intrigued to know how we got them in the roof lockers, to be honest. <laughs> but this wasn't the only worry for competitors on Rally Bohemia. One of the problems of rallying in this neck of the woods is that the petrol that's commercially available isn't of a high enough octane for these specially tuned rally engines. So the solution is to mix a special brew and bring it here by tanker for the event. The Rally Bohemia is part of the European Championship and uses closed public roads as well as forest tracks. It's the Czech Republic's equivalent of the RAC Rally. Enrico Batoni was leading the championship in his ex-works Toyota Celica and looked like the man to beat. Skoda had recruited the ultra-experienced Stig Blomqvist to drive their new 1500cc Formula 2 kit car and the huge crowds enjoyed every minute of the Swedes' inimitable driving style. The Austrian driver, Kurt Gottlicker, had entered an escort Cosworth prepared and serviced from England. The second works Skoda Felicia was entrusted to Jindrik Stolfer, as works driver Pavel Sabera was busy elsewhere, winning the Formula 2 section of the Rally of Argentina. Audis, who pioneered four-wheel drive in world rallying, are still popular in mainland Europe. This is Austrian Raymond Baumschlager. Leading the British Skoda Championship contenders was John Pritchard from North Wales. The rally was very important to him. We can in, uh, clinch the championship on this event. Um, so, on the one hand, we feel we want to go out and try and win because it's Skoda's 100th year and we're in Czech and it's the first time abroad. On the other hand, you've got something in the back of your mind saying maybe you should be a bit more cautious, but we don't like coming second. But Pritchard got off to a bad start, and it was Peter Cuthbert from Northumberland who set the early pace among the Brits. Carl Stevens was just seven seconds behind Cuthbert as he tackled the first rough stage of the rally. And a further seven seconds behind was Mike Cawthra. The event was much rougher than the British contingent had expected, but no one appeared to be letting up. Tim Green from Oxfordshire was playing a waiting game, a further six seconds behind. The British drivers were finding the unusually hot and dusty conditions quite demanding, and they were also a bit of a shock for Stig Blomqvist. A lot of gravel this year, and it's very, very rough, so it's, it's not what it's like to be in European rally, it's more like African event in some places. <laughs> And also the sun and the heat is a bit yeah, like Africa. The heat is the same. So even you are sweating a bit. <laughs> it's over 90 degrees here, really hot, and yet they're still putting the warmers on the tyres. Now, this is the first time that the Rally Bohemia has been a mixed surface event. In the past, it's always been all tarmac. So you can imagine, this year, it's a constant problem of tyre choice. All of the British Skoda Brigade had brought service crews of one sort or another, but for one driver, John Pritchard, tyre choice was the very least of his problems. Oh, now then, need I ask what you've been doing? Well, uh, we hit the tree on the first stage, the same as we did in Ulster last year, but this time we came out. So uh, very, very slippy under the trees, it was very wet. Um, so we've been going very, very slow ever since, because we, uh, we want to finish. So did you lose much time with that? We dropped three minutes. The weather in the Czech Republic was almost tropical and a sudden cloudburst turned the dry, dusty surfaces into a quagmire. For the lower orders, including all our Brits, it was a cross between synchronised swimming and come dancing. Back on terra firma, the leaderboard was taking shape and by the ninth stage, the Salika of Batoni and Chiaponi had a healthy 52-second lead. The Austrian, Gottlicker, and his German co-driver, Peter Diekmann, were up in second place with some fairly exuberant driving. 
With 120 brake horsepower and only two-wheel drive, Stig Blomqvist's performance in the Felicia was quite remarkable. He was up in third place. More and more Western rally cars are starting to appear on East European rallies. This is top Czech driver Danislav Krecek in his escort Cosworth. But down at the end of the field, it was all happening. Carl Stevens and Roger Wayne had taken the lead among the British Skodas. Peter Goodwin and Roger Dowgill from Essex were in a comfortable second spot, but being chased hard. But by the end of the day, Dave Jennings and Garrett O'Connor overhauled Goodwin to hold second place in the British Skoda trophy section. There were regular service points in towns and villages along the route to the delight of the locals, but for one of the British crews, things were far from delightful. We've uh, hit something very hard in there, I'm not sure what it was, and it's uh, smashed the sump guard up against the gearbox, uh, which has cracked and all the oil's come out, so we're going to have to replace the gearbox now. So what sort of a job is that on a Skoda? It's re relatively straightforward if you're in a workshop, but when you're in the middle of a public street, it's pretty difficult. How long have you got? We're late already, we're supposed to be up the road two minutes ago. I think we've got about 30 minutes late, which we're going to have to use probably all of it. Regrettably, Cuthbert and Peel's roadside repairs didn't work. They ran out of time and retired. But it appeared that everyone was running out of time when I decided to have a little chat with the top boys. Kurt, you're going very well okay. in second place. Oh, you got to go? Yeah. OK. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot now on the gravel. Two minutes in between, but it's only one minute in between. All right, OK, good luck. Now I must go. OK, good luck, you're doing very well. Bye Keep bye. going. Well, I know when I'm not wanted, so it was off to bed for me. Day two took the cars further east with a mixture of tarmac stages and then those dreaded rough forests which weren't going down too well with the Austro-German crew in the escort Cosworth. It's flat out all the time. You have right and left the trees. There is bumps in, there is big rocks in. So uh, this is no rally driving. Corners that, you have, that we have to, to reverse because it's no way for doing the handbrake business there with this car. So I don't know what, what they think about this sort of rally driving. Someone else getting hot under the collar was Dave Jennings. The pressure was starting to tell. We've gone mental on that stage. That's the worst international, worst stage I've ever been in. And the Skoda Trophy's got to go flat out through it. Steering wheels like this, we're going to hit tarmac, we're going to be doing 100 mile an hour downhill, braking to a hairpin left. Car's, um, car's not very good. <laughs> uh, lots of problems. That is rough. And we've gone out to win here, and we're trying to take a minute and a half off Carl Stevens. We're going to do it. But Carl Stevens was taking it all in his stride, oblivious to Jennings' intentions. In third spot among the Brits were Tim Green and Peter Johnson. Like most of the British drivers, they were finding the Rally Bohemia a fantastic adventure and, whatever the shortcomings of the route, were lapping up the local hospitality but taking things very seriously. There's probably three people in contention, and it's all very close, but we feel we might have the upper hand with some tarmac stages left. Although this hadn't been a particularly good rally for John Pritchard and Ian Marshall, they would finish fourth in the British section, enough to win the Skoda Championship. Although in its closing stages, the rally was far from over for the Brits, and Carl Stevens suddenly found himself in second place. And Tim Green's predictions proved correct as he and Peter Johnson drove swiftly but smoothly to claim top spot among the British contingent. But it has to be said, the crowds hadn't come to see the Brits. They were more interested in the antics at the head of the field, particularly local star Kretschek, whose escort finished third. In second place overall, another crowd pleaser. Stig Blomqvist with Benny Melander in the works Skoda Felicia. But the clear winner of the Rally Bohemia by four minutes was the Italian Enrico Bertoni, who went on to win the European Championship.